The Kansas City Chiefs, led by star quarterback Patrick Mahomes, are building a legitimate dynasty. But the flip side to the Chiefs' renaissance is a history of tragedy off the field. The Chiefs may be on the cusp of Super Bowl glory once again, but they've certainly faced their share of tragedy. In 1968, running back Bruce McLenna died serving in the National Guard before he ever suited up to play a pro game. Before that, rookie running back Mac Lee Hill died unexpectedly in surgery after being injured during a game, inspiring a Rookie of the Season award that bears his name to this day. Tragedy struck the Chiefs again on January 23, 2000, when star linebacker Derek Thomas was ejected from an SUV after losing control of it during an ice storm. Thomas was traveling with two friends to the Kansas City airport on their way to see the NFC Championship game in St. Louis. Thomas and another passenger were both thrown from the vehicle, hospitalizing Thomas and killing his friend on the scene. Neither man was wearing their seatbelt. The third passenger, who was buckled in, survived the crash with only minor injuries. Thomas was admitted to a Kansas City hospital before being transferred to another one in Miami. Thomas had been paralyzed in the accident and was wheelchair-bound when he suffered a heart attack and died on February 8th. We've had season tickets out here for several years. It's not going to be the same. Thomas was a star on the Chiefs' defense, making nine Pro Bowl appearances throughout his career. Drafted in 1989 out of the University of Alabama, Thomas remains the all-time sacks leader for the Chiefs. The Chiefs' kingdom was rocked in 2012 by one of the most horrific incidents involving an active NFL player. On December 1, 2012, ABC reports that Javon Belcher shot and killed his girlfriend, Cassandra Perkins, in the home that the two shared. Belcher's mother was in another room in the house at the time, caring for the couple's newborn child. Neither Belcher's mother nor the baby was physically harmed. Belcher then drove to the Chiefs' training facility, confronting then-General manager Scott Pioli and then coach Romeo Crennel, Belcher presented a handgun and shot himself in the head in front of the two men. A year after the murder-suicide, an autopsy revealed that Belcher suffered from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. CTE is a degenerative brain disease that is commonly found in athletes that experience frequent head trauma. This condition was found to be present during autopsies performed on fellow NFL stars Junior Seau and Dave Durson, who both died by suicide. According to the New Republic, while there is a correlation between CTE and a propensity to violent and uncontrollable behavior, doctors are quick to point out that there are often other factors involved that might influence this type of behavior. The Chiefs took a chance on Joe Delaney in the 1981 NFL Draft, selecting the Northwestern University running back in the 41st overall pick that year. Though small in size and from a university not known for a strong athletics program at the time, Delaney was a star on the college field. He ran for more than 3,000 yards and 31 touchdowns. In the backfield for the Chiefs in his rookie year, Delaney ran for 1,121 yards on 234 carries and made it into the end zone three times. While his second season was limited to only eight games due to a player's strike and eye surgery, Delaney nonetheless averaged nearly 50 rushing yards that season. On June 29, 1983, Delaney was with friends in a park in Monroe, Louisiana when they heard someone screaming for help. In a nearby pond, three boys had gone under and were feared to be drowning. Despite not knowing how to swim, Delaney rushed into the pond where he is believed to have saved the life of one boy. In Monroe, Louisiana late today, police said that a man identified as Joe Delaney, star running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, drowned trying to rescue a child. When Delaney went back in to retrieve the other two, he never resurfaced. The two other boys drowned with him. Though talented with a promising career ahead of him, Delaney sacrificed his life in an attempt to save others. President Ronald Reagan posthumously awarded Delaney with the Presidential Citizens Medal on July 13, 1983. In 2014, Eric Berry was entering his fifth season as a safety for the Chiefs, racking up defensive stats including 216 solo tackles and three interception touchdowns. 
Barry was a three-time Pro Bowl selection with one first-team All-Pro. But Barry saw his career potentially coming to an end in the middle of the 2014 season when he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease, a form of cancer. Barry had been through a battery of tests after a large mass was discovered on his chest. Many thought his time in the NFL was over. Thankfully, a fully healed Barry returned at the beginning of the 2015 season and picked up where he left off. After a stellar season on the field that garnered him another Pro Bowl selection, Barry was named Comeback Player of the Year. He played an additional three seasons for the Chiefs before injuries forced him to retire after the 2018 season. Days before Super Bowl 55 in February 2021, Chiefs assistant coach Britt Reid was involved in a three-vehicle crash that injured two young girls. According to CNN, Reid was driving at a high rate of speed in his Dodge Ram when he struck two other vehicles that were at the side of the road. One of the vehicles had stalled earlier, and the driver had called a family member for assistance. Shortly after arriving to aid their family member, Reed's truck crashed into them. One of the children had moderate injuries and was soon released from the hospital. The second wasn't as fortunate. Five-year-old Ariel Young suffered from a severe traumatic brain injury, a fracture, and brain contusions. Reed had a blood alcohol concentration of 0.113, well over the legal limit. When asked if he had been drinking, Reed advised he had two to three drinks. He was charged with the Class D felony DUI and told to stand trial, where he faces a possible penalty of one to seven years in prison if convicted, according to NBC News. Young's family reports that she has permanent brain damage, but is recovering slowly but surely. The Chiefs released a statement on November 21, 2021, that detailed an agreement with Young's family and attorneys, binding the team to provide Young with, quote, world-class medical care and long-term financial stability for the rest of her life. Isaiah Pacheco kicked off his NFL career with Kansas City in 2022, but it had been a long road to get there. Along the way, he lost two of his siblings to tragic and violent deaths. The first was his older brother, Tavares Cannon, who was stabbed and killed at his apartment in January 2016. Reported by NJ.com, Isaiah credited his brother for always being there for him. Then, on September 20, 2017, Isaiah's sister, Celeste Cannon was discovered in her home. She had been killed by a single gunshot to the head. And when Donald Scurry Jr. was convicted of her murder and sentenced to 65 years in prison, the outlet noted that it wasn't the first time he'd been charged with murder. The first time he had been acquitted. Isaiah told NJ.com that he was trying to step up, not only on the field, but for the three children that his sister left behind. My nephew, we're trying to introduce him to football. And he was out here in the stands and that brought a light to me. He added that for him, it's more than a game. I play football for them. My family had a lot of ups and downs. I'm the youngest one out of all my brothers and sisters, and I just kind of bring that smile to my mom's face when I'm out here on this field. It definitely uh, motivates me a lot because, you know, I, I can't go to them for advice anymore. The 2022 season kicked off Kansas City head coach Andy Reid's 10th year with the team, and it also marked 10 years since his son, Garrett Reid, was found dead in his dorm room. Andy Reid's oldest son, Garrett, was found dead in his room at Lehigh University, where the Eagles hold their training camp. Garrett's death was determined to be an accidental overdose of heroin, according to the Associated Press. At the time of his death, Andy was the coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, and his 29-year-old son had been working with the team's strength and conditioning coach during summer training camp at the university. His tragic passing came after what his family called a battle that has been ongoing for the last eight years. Five years prior, he began a stretch in and out of jail and rehab programs after getting into a car accident while under the influence of heroin. Police not only found the drug in his possession, but also several hundred pills. He was given a two-year jail sentence. At the time of his sentencing, he had said, I don't want to die doing drugs. I don't want to be that kid who was the son of the head coach of the Eagles, who was spoiled and on drugs and OD'd and just faded into oblivion. Unfortunately, as CBS News highlights, his troubles didn't end there, with smuggling charges coming on the heels of his initial sentence, followed by failing drug tests that added to his prison time. In the official statement made by the family after his death, they offered these words to other families dealing with addiction. They will always have our support, encouragement, and understanding. Never give up. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, 
please dial or text 988 to speak with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. You can also seek help by visiting 988lifeline.org.